Hey everybody, so we are back again for another episode on the camper. And uh, it's, just, it's not good, it's not good at all. So, uh, let's take a look at what's going on. No, you're not bringing home another piece of junk. <laughs> So anyway, she's she's looking good. Just about everything's done on it. I mean, we uh, I got all kinds of things working out here. I changed out my uh, changed out my water spigot inlet that had a little leak on it, so we got a new one there. Uh, we fixed a lot of little things on here. Once I got that fixed, I uh, had a couple leaks inside. I had to fix. Uh, one on the water line in the kitchen, one on the water line going to the water heater. The gas water heater is working. Uh, all this stuff is working. Uh, roof air is working. Cab air is working. It's all charged up. There's our little sign coming in. And if you can see, um, Alicia did a great job of this thing. Decorated real nice. My granddaughter painted that table for us. I thought that was really cool. We put some plexiglass over that. Uh, what else? Um, all this up here is done. Um, so that's the good part. We've, we've got a camping trip scheduled for uh, two in two weeks. And it floors all down. I don't know if you've seen all this or not. And uh, bathroom's all done. Decor in the bathroom. That's the good. Here's the bad. So, we took her for a drive on the highway. Uh, about an hour both directions on the way back. Oil pressure gauge started acting fluky. Um, started up the next day. Oil pressure was fine. Took it out on the highway on a shorter trip. On the way back, oil pressure gauge went down to about well, if you can see, it went down into the red. And I could hear it starting to make a little top end noise. And I was like, uh-oh. So I put a mechanical gauge on it just to check and make sure. And I have got almost no oil pressure at idle. So I don't know what happened. I don't know if it spun a bearing. Um, didn't lose any oil. I uh, went ahead and changed the oil. Make sure that it didn't look like it had metal in it. It... Uh, had some swirly stuff in it, which I put a zinc additive in it for the lifter break in. So I don't know if I'm seeing that or I'm seeing metal, but regardless, um, something bad happened. And uh, it's got to come back out. So that's not good. So what we're going to do is we're going to go the cheapest route. And I have got this 350 from my van that I just scrapped. And I know this thing ran, runs excellent. I drove this van for, I guess, three years almost. Hauled some big loads with it. And this engine, although kind of greasy and nasty looking, ran great. Never used any oil. Never knocked. Always has good oil pressure. So we're just going to clean this guy up uh, and throw it in there over the next few days it's a tbi motor picked up an aluminum intake so i can use the q jet and i ordered a set of um, stainless headers because when i took this out i broke off every exhaust manifold stud so that's what we're gonna do so that's what this video is gonna be we're gonna get this thing apart i'm, I'm not gonna take it all the way apart we're just gonna i'm gonna take it out power wash it we're gonna clean a few things up on it swap a few parts out on it and uh it's gonna go in there so uh, major bummer i am gonna get tear the 454 down at some point and see what happened to it see if it's um how bad it is and if i'm gonna do anything further with it from that or if i'm just going to uh sell it off to somebody else so anyway this is an episode i definitely did not want to do but uh um like I said, everything else is done on this camper. We really wanted to take it out. So 
rather than pull the motor out and tear it all apart and figure out what's wrong with it and throw, put it back in we're just going with this for now it had a 350 before and i think it will be fine for at least for this summer um and it's free and it's here so let me uh run this thing out run it through a power washer and then we'll uh take a look at what we're going to do with this next okay well that degreased pretty well i just used what i had here I had a can of degreaser and a can of uh carb cleaner can of brake cleaner so we sprayed it all on there and it uh cleaned up pretty good so i said i'm not worried about making it beautiful i just want to get the heavy grease off of it so all right you know i should have just done this this is what i was going to do to begin with i had the motor in the other van i was just going to put an intake and some headers on it and uh uh, well, I was going to put some new gaskets on it, but I'm not going to worry about that, really. The only thing it was leaking was the uh, the front of the intake was leaking oil and the valve covers were leaking oil. So that's too late now, but that's, that's what I should have done. I should have listened to myself. But it is what it is. That's part of uh, the car hobby is you, you have to blow your stuff up every once in a while. And I haven't blown nothing up in a while, so... All right, well, let's start stripping this thing and we'll uh, see what we got. Okay, that is as far down as it's going. So I'll pull my uh, power steering hoses off here and I'll just transplant the hoses from there onto here. So, but all the rest of it's staying. We're just gonna clean this up, put the intake on it. Motor looks good inside, just kind of like I knew it would. Ports are clean. Um, no sludge at all in the heads. A little water in there from power washing, but that's all right. We'll get that out of there. And uh, that's it. We're going to slap this puppy on here. That, the set of headers. Maybe we'll fog some paint over the rusty valve cover so it doesn't continue to rust. And done. So, kind of a bummer. All right, well, I got some parts coming. I got these gaskets coming. I got this gasket coming. So we'll wait till we get them before we stick it back together here. And uh, so next thing I gotta do is start pulling that apart. So um, not tonight and tomorrow night I'm busy. And Thursday when I get off work, we're gonna hit that thing hard and we'll record it and see how quick we can pull a big block. Now that I've... Uh, done a motor swap on that and just pulled the pulled this motor out of the other van i'm i should be good to go on these vans i should be able to wipe that thing out in no time all right so back in a little while okay so we're going to try to surgically remove this engine without getting the inside of this thing filthy so that shouldn't be too bad i mean we got uh everything was clean and painted so we're not dealing with a, a whole bunch of greasy parts so um, I started taking a few things off here, so uh, and let's just let's strip this thing down, and I'm hoping by the end of today that it's out of here. So uh, let's uh, let's hit it, and see what we got. sorry folks i uh forgot to turn the camera back on but uh here's where we are and uh came out of there real easy you know once you do it once it's uh 
it's pretty easy to do except i forgot to unhook my temperature gauge so that's not gonna work so we'll have to put a put a different one in um okay well all i need to do on the i really don't need to do anything out there um i need to clean up where the intake uh for the intake gaskets and i've got uh gasket should be here today it says out for delivery so i need to put the intake on need to put the headers on um i'm gonna put that good alternator back on that i just took off and put on there and uh this compressor when i had that ac running sounded great and it uh held pressure since i charged that thing a week ago still up full of freon so i really want to use that compressor if, it'll, if that will bolt up to that bracket i think it will so we're going to swap that out and uh, i did just put brand new plugs in that i think they're the same so i put plugs in this not too long ago too but uh we'll go ahead and pull those out and uh see if they're the right plug for this small block and if so we'll slap them in there any any new thing i put in here that i can use over here we're going to use we're going to use that distributor I got a brand new thermostat I just put in there. We'll put that on there. Um, I put a water pump on this thing like a year and a half ago, so that should be good. Um, but yeah, don't really have to buy much to do uh, to do the swappy. So let me get on to uh, bolting some parts on, and then uh, we will film the uh, the re-transplant, and I'll try to remember to turn the camera on this time. Okay, I got the intake bolted on, got the uh, alternator back on. Um, most people probably know this, but the uh, the TBI, the later model um, small block Chevy heads, the center bolts are at a different angle than the end bolts. And you can use the earlier intakes, but what you got to do is take a die grinder and kind of oval these holes, four holes out a little bit. And... Uh, what I usually do is I, I oval those out, and as soon as I can get four, all four of these bolts in, just finger threaded, then I know I got it right. And then I go ahead and put the gasket on, put the goo on, put all the bolts on. But uh, I just do a little bit at a time, and you're, you're kind of going this way with it, ovaling it out because it's it's more to steep, more of an up and down down angle than that angle. So. Okay, we got this guy on. Um, let me go ahead and get valve cover gaskets on. Then we're going to put the um, compressor back on. The compressor off that engine will not fit. I was hoping it would, but it will not. So uh, I'm hoping that the compressor that was on here is good. I never tried it. It was on the van forever. There it is. Different style. The Harrison, the long type. So hopefully it's good. And then uh, we got valve cover gaskets so that came in. Got the uh, little shorty headers, those came in. So let's get all this stuff on there. Then we'll pull it off with the cherry picker, slap the flywheel on it and it's ready to go in. So. Okay, that is where we're stopping tonight. She is uh, ready to drop back in there. And uh, I just got to pull it off stand, put the flywheel on it, and uh, in we go. So uh, I'm going to stop for tonight. I've been on it pretty hard today. And uh, when I get home from work tomorrow, we will uh, set it in there. And then uh, Saturday during the day, we'll get her all bolted up and hopefully take it for a test drive Saturday. You know, I pulled those plugs out of here too uh, just to look at them and they, they look like I just put them in there and I put those plugs in. Well, I mean, it's been over a year, but it was probably realistically like 10,000 miles ago. I didn't put that many miles uh, on this van. So that's when I had left them plugs in there and uh, got the, I'm not gonna worry about those right now. So distributors in, swap my new thermostat in that I just put in that motor. Um, yep. Ready to go. So, all right, we'll be uh, back on her tomorrow and we'll set her in there and uh, see what she looks like. Okay, she is ready to push in there and I hope these headers will clear. 
it's uh, gonna be interesting, that's for sure. Especially this one. This one really kind of sticks out from the side. So, and I hope I can use these things. I really don't want to have to mess with fixing all the manifold studs. So uh, let's. Uh, I got some old brother Bruce coming over to help me push this thing in, and then we'll uh, we'll give it a shot and see where we're at. So, I'm back in just a few. So we're getting an early start today, 6.15, sun's just coming up. Let's see what we got. Remember that clean garage I showed you guys just about a week ago? <laughs> it's, it's like, what happened? It's like a bomb went off in here. Oh, man, it's cold out this morning, too. It's like 42 degrees. <sighs> Birds are happy, though. All right, here's where we're starting. I'm hoping today it's back on the road. So, Mr. Camper, I just absolutely hate you right now. No, not Mr. Camper, Gracie. Got to remember, wife named it. I got to call it by its name. So, since as a girl, I can't say I hate her. But uh, I'm extremely disappointed right now. <laughs> All right, let's start uh, bolting stuff back up and uh, see how far we get. All right, you know, one thing I was kind of concerned about with these headers was header location and clearance. Just uh, bolting them on the engine on the stand, it really looked like this one stuck out pretty far from the engine. But I'll tell you what, it is really nice. I mean, it's these are just a cheap universal 89 eBay stainless header. But uh, it's almost like they were made for this thing because its uh, location is just about perfect. I might have to move that tranny line a little bit. But other than that, frame clearance is really good. Starter clearance is good. And a hookup to the old exhaust pipes is going to be really good. So, all right, let me get, uh, let me get some stuff bolted under here. I think I need a light. It's still pretty dark out this morning let me get a shop light get the stuff bolted up under here and we'll pick it up when i start bolting up stuff up top okay so we are all buttoned up in here and i'll tell you what i really really like these headers look how much clearance you got on those spark plug boots same on the other side i mean just no interference problems whatsoever so uh i don't know if that fit every chassis but they fit this chassis nice and that sure worked out good so all right so i believe yeah everything in here is done except for hooking the compressor lines up which we're going to worry about that in a little while um, so I want to go ahead and let's get the power steering hooked up uh, and get a belt on this thing and a fan and let's go ahead and hook the battery up and try to crank this thing over and just make sure it's going to start and run okay um, so interesting thing I had to find out with this this is my first um, delve into hydro boost so on the big block power steering pump you had three ports on this thing. There was another port just on the top of the pump that this overflow line for the, uh, this is a, like a low pressure overflow that comp for the hydro boost. And from what I read, you get like, you know, maybe like a half a teaspoon of fluid out of that every time you hit the brake. And uh, 
and then it would go just go back into the pump reservoir well this one don't have the pump reservoir so did some reading online and they said just to tee this in so i went and got some tees with the low pressure return so just put a tee in there um, run it to there and then run your regular low pressure return and that will take care of it so uh, that's what we're going to do so let me get that done and uh, get some fluid in this thing i guess i've got them out the reservoir up here somewhere um, and we'll get a belt on this thing and let's see if she's going to fire up All right, let's see if this thing's gonna run. This time I remembered to loop the transmission lines together. So I don't have a radiator in it yet. I just wanna make sure it's gonna run before I put the rest of the front end back together. Fuel pump. pressure gauge ain't working and I know what you're thinking that maybe that's what was wrong with the other engine but the other engine the gauge was working and it dropped and I heard it start rattling so um I don't want to know if I cut a wire or did something with this thing all right let's put the mechanical gauge on it and check it real quick and then uh, just to verify I know this is a good engine. Let's see what we got. Pounds, so it's that sending it, it's messed up, or maybe it's got a piece of junk in it. Anyway, I think I'll just mount that oil pressure gauge up on the dash somewhere. I got a long enough tubing to do that. Um, yes, good Bessie. Okay, we're gonna button the front up, get some cooling in it and uh, let it run a little bit. And um, also got it, well, I need to tie back this throttle cable somewhere. So I don't want that hitting the header. Okay, we'll do that and then uh, get the front end on and then we can start working on exhaust. So we're looking good.
right, getting these pipes hooked up on this side. And uh, doing a little slice and dice. So we'll weld that on there. We're gonna find a piece to slip over that and to slip there. And then we'll tack weld that. So we'll get this all tack welded together and we'll make this end a slip on piece over that that we'll clamp. That joint will be welded and that joint will be welded. So, I need to find a piece to go over this. And I need to drag my welder over here. But, all back together, no leaks. Um, got the coolant in it. Sat here and ran it for a while, no problems. No, uh, nothing overheating. Uh, I gotta get a different fitting for that air conditioning compressor. So this is the one for the R4 compressor. Comes straight out the back. I need an angle one that goes up like this because the back, if you see it, the back of the compressor is right where the oil filler tube is. So there's no room in there for it. It's gonna have to come up at a 90 and then come out, which they do make that fitting. All right, so let me, uh, let me get this one welded up and then uh, we'll take a look at what it looks like and we'll do the other side. All right, so that side of the exhaust is done. All buttoned up. Now I just need to do this side and that's about it. And the pipe that was on here is pretty darn close to fitting up to that. So I'm gonna make a few cuts, get it up on there, tack it in place, pull it off, weld it and uh, be done. So I'm cruising right along. Let me get this side done and then we'll uh, fire this thing up and see what it sounds like with the exhaust on. All right, that side is on. This one I took back behind the transmission pan. The way that stock pipe was, if I'd have hooked it on there, it, it, it had worked, but it had gone right under the middle of the transmission pan. That's, that's no good. All right, so let's fire this thing up, see what it sounds like with the exhaust. <laughs> what is that? Piece of fuzz blue in here. Good. Very good. You might want to go ahead and set the timing on this thing. Sound like that starter drug a little bit. Yeah, that's nice. Pretty quiet, actually. motor I didn't unhook the sensing line so I'm gonna put that oil pressure gauge right there and I got enough saving I'm just gonna run it up there and we're just gonna have that oil pressure gauge and uh, I used the sending unit that was on this motor and I know it was good and it's temperature's looking real good on it so. all right well that's really about it uh, Tell you what, instead of ending this video here, we'll take this one that's quicker here or something. We'll take it for a drive tomorrow and uh, see how it does after I get that gauge and stuff on. But uh, that's gonna be it for today. Okay, so we are uh, test driving again. Hopefully, this test drive 
goes better than the last test drive. <laughs> Sounds like it's running pretty good. I got good oil pressure. I uh, good voltage, good temperature. Need to turn the idle up a little bit. Going, sweetie. Where are we going, sweetie? Oh, I don't know. Wherever you want to go. Just not far. Okay, so there's your uh, engine transplant slash test drive video, and so far so good. I think we're I think we're going to be in okay shape. So hopefully we don't have to put motor number three in there. So if we got to do that, it might just uh, we might turn it into an apartment out in front of the house and rent it out. So <laughs> anyway, I uh, didn't have a message prepared for to, uh, today, but. Um, Last night we had some friends over and we did a Facebook Live revival where we did about an hour's worth of music and I had a good friend of ours preach a message and I just want to tell you it, it was awesome. Um, uh, Alicia did a great job with uh, all the planning of it and uh, we had probably 15-20 people here mm -hmm. all participating in the music and in the message and and uh, so you know, the things you can do with social media now are, are pretty cool that uh, it's such a great avenue for ministering, whether it be something like this or what we did last night. So um, rather than have a message, I just want to encourage everybody to, to do something like that in your own home. You know, just uh, uh, you and your spouse, uh, grab a Bible, make a video, post it on Facebook. Watch, him, watch our video. Watch our video. Mm -hmm. Take prayer requests. But it, it's a good way that people can minister from your own home and uh, and reach people that really need it. So, that's the message for this week. You wanna pray for us, honey, or? You go ahead. Hey, go ahead, okay. Father, I just uh, thank you for this, uh, the, the time with you this week, uh, with the chance to minister uh, to, with the music last night. Um, thank you for this, uh, the channel and the people watching it, uh, anybody out there uh, is, uh, we, we just pray that you would uh, you would soften hearts and and touch those who who need to hear from you. And um, I just ask uh, that as we go into this week and as everybody out there goes into the week, that uh, 
We ask for your blessings and for your guidance and your encouragement and for obedience for us. And we ask this in the name of your precious son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, hit like, hit subscribe. And uh, this may be, hopefully, the last camper video.